got this $50 billion a year subsidy through Section 8 housing. I mean, Governor Newsom, just take that money, some of it, funnel some of that, you know, divert some of that, and start building, working on housing projects. Let them own their own houses. I'm not saying you build, you know, ghettos and, and, and projects and stuff like that. No. Give people houses. Who owns it? The government. Who's the government? They are the recipient of that free house. You'll be solving the, you'll fix it once and for all. Do you understand? I mean, that's why I don't want people to understand the difference between renting and buying. By supporting this Section 8 as it stands, it's just, we're going to be renting in perpetuity. People got to get it, man. Own stuff. Don't rent it. Fix it, man. I'm telling you. I, mean, I just don't can't believe I'm smarter than everybody else. I refuse to believe that. So please, Governor, pray. Pray to God, and he'll give you... If you want, if you really want the truth, the whole truth, nothing but truth, and you really want to be a good governor and serve the people of California well, listen to me, man. We're both native Californians. You want to make Californians proud? You want you want to set the right example for the rest of the nation and by extension the rest of the world? Then listen to me, man. Really do something to dry up homelessness. They're all, yeah, we all know California's homelessness is the worst. They all come here. They need to survive. In any of these Midwestern states, they're not going to survive out there in the cold, the eastern states. No way, man. The northern states are not no way, man. They come to California to survive. So let's do it. Let's dry it up here, man, and we'll do the right thing. We'll please God because there's great wrath coming down on us. I know there is, man. There's got to be. I mean, just put yourself in God's position. How would you feel? How, how long can this problem get worse and worse and worse before we put our feet down as Californians and say, no more? Let's fix it permanently. Solve this problem. Stop maintaining it. And all these people, these industries sprouting up that benefit from sustaining this desperate poverty. Come on. Come on, man. Come on. We can fix it, bro. But you're going to have to, you know, really put people in their place and say, no. Good is going to prevail. God's will is going to be done in California. And I'm going to represent it. So that's what I got to say to Governor Newsom, man. I beg you, brother. I implore you as a friend, a fellow Californian. Do the right thing, man. And do what you said. You, you knew right away. You said, we need affordable housing. That's exactly what we need. See exactly what the problem is. Unaffordable housing. That explains the homelessness. How to fix it? Come on, man. I already told you how. Take a little bit of that money, man, that's coming in. You spend the tax dollars wisely to solve this problem. And yeah, you're going to be hated by certain groups. You betcha. You betcha. Tough. That's tough. Haters got to hate, man. But you can resolve to be no man's enemy. That's your prerogative, just like it's mine and everybody else's. But just say, damn it, justice is going to prevail. Fairness is going to prevail in our land. And if we're going to open the doors to all the immigrants in the world, and I'm fine with that once we fix our own problems. Hell, I'm no xenophobe. But we should transmit images of our own problems to these countries they're coming from, these immigrants, and let them know, hey, don't come here expecting a free ride on welfare because we're neglecting our own native-born sons and daughters. See, here's the images. No, they're not doing it. You understand, this thing is, we're in a lot of trouble. We got to get serious, man. We got this idiot Coast Guard guy. Here's a good diversion. He wants to kill Democrats and all. Oh, yeah, that's going to really help the Republicans, isn't it? What an idiot. Good God. People can be so damn stupid. You know, I have a really good life, and I continue to have a really good life. But I'm living it without the girl of my dreams, and um, I would like that to change very, very much. This, uh, this woman that I've fallen in love with, I just find her absolutely bewitching, enthralling. I would like to be possessed by her. Never hurt her.
could never make her jealous. Devoted, loyal, and true is what I would be. God, she's just absolutely perfect for me. And the fact that she thinks she's flawed just adds to her irresistible perfection. Perfect. She's just perfect. Like she was made, custom made for me. That's how much I like this woman. Flawless. Flawless. I'm going to go on to some uh, thoughts from the last couple of weeks. You know, using the analogy of the frogs in the pot of water and how they, um, they won't jump out if you turn up the heat slowly enough. They'll just be lulled to sleep and just feel comfortable and they'll complacent and they'll stay in the pot. This is what happened to the American people in 1963 at the assassination of JFK. This is when we were plunked in the pot. And uh, a bit of mud was added to the pot using the mainstream media. And they come up with this, well, who done it? You know, there's the mud right there. Well, it's just a who done it. They don't want to say, well, you know, let's really use all the forensic at our fingertips here and really suss out all the people that have a motivation an incentive possibly to do this and and focus in on the Federal Reserve Bank and the fact that JFK was eliminating the Federal Reserve Bank was already had already supplanted the Federal Reserve notes they were in circulation the uh, silver notes the silver certificates that JFK had issued to the American people and we were taken to it we liked the idea of sound money do you understand but the mainstream media is not going to talk about that. I mean, just the omission is mud in the water. Do you understand? So they muddy. We're in the water, in muddy water. The mainstream media is just feeding that mud and the confusion and the who done it thing. And we don't know uh, who anybody. I mean, just a nut, lone nut. It was uh, what's his name. Uh, Lee Harvey Oswald that did it on his own, Lone Wolf, and there's no, they're all conspiracy theorists, even though it's, you know, well over half the American people that never believed the official story. But, you know, who was incentivized? What group? And it was this Federal Reserve Bank. You know, and, you know, the fact that these people existed day one after the assassination is absurd. And now that they're, they're completely thriving and they've put the American people in debt to the tune of over $20 trillion, I mean, God, we're so screwed up, my friends. But we're thoroughly cooked at this point in history. And only God can save us from the maws of these people just chowing us down. Really, at this point, only God can help us. We've got to pray a lot. But we basically have monsters running the show. And we've got to show mercy mixed with fear. Like written in the book of Jude. Jude 1, chapter 1, verse 23. Mercy mixed with fear, hating even the clothing, clothing stained by sin. Loving quotes, concealed love is worse than open.